Each day on Idaho Matters, through a wide range of topics, you'll hear from neighbors and friends about the ever-evolving social and cultural landscapes of Idaho. Listen to the Idaho Matters podcast at BoiseStatePublicRadio.org today. From Boise State Public Radio, this is The Connector, Idaho's Daily News. Good morning. I'm George Prentice. We've got quite a few stories to share with you this morning, including a big change in the weather outlook. We'll tell you about a rather controversial move at a local meeting of the Board of Health in one of Idaho's health districts. We have an election update and also... We'll tell you about an effort to make jury duty more more bearable. It is Wednesday, the 23rd of October, and here are today's stories. So let's get right to it and hear about the change in the weather. Sophia Adams is at the National Weather Service office. Good morning, George. How are you doing? I'm well, but I'm anxious to hear about the change and when we might expect it. Yes, so we're expecting a cold front to move through this afternoon through the Treasure Valley area and through the mountains in uh, western Idaho and southeastern Oregon. We're expecting uh, widespread rain and wind gusts anywhere from 20 to 30 miles per hour with that uh, cold front and gusts anywhere from 40 to 45 miles per hour for the brief period of time when that cold front passes. Uh, And we are expecting some mountain snow to occur as well. We're seeing snow levels right around 7 to 8,000 feet uh, during the morning and afternoon period. And then overnight, we're expecting those snow levels to drop to right around 5 to 6,000 feet. Um, So we could see, you know, minimal snow accumulations. The system looks like it's moving pretty, pretty fast. So anywhere from one to two inches up at those higher elevations. So how long might it linger and... Is there any change on the other side of that? Yeah, so it'll move through pretty fast um, later this afternoon and into Thursday morning. Uh, And then we'll have a ridge of high pressure build back in uh, for the weekend. So it's looking like we'll get back to temperatures about 5 to 10 degrees above normal through most of the for most of the uh, forecast area. And we could be even in the 70s in the Treasure Valley on Saturday. Wow. And how about long range? I know. Some people are anxious about next week being Halloween. Uh, Is more change? Are we now in a season of change? Yes, it looks like we're we're back into a more typical fall pattern than kind of the dry October that we've been seeing. So Monday, uh, late next Monday, we are tracking um, another cooler and wetter system that will move through, likely bring some more mountain snow um, and widespread rain and cooler temperatures as well. And then um, looks like for Halloween right now, it's still a little bit in the longer term mm-hmm. forecast, so the uncertainty is still still pretty high, but it does look like there is a chance, maybe a 20 to 30 percent chance for for rain uh, in the Treasure Valley on uh, Halloween night right now. Following a sometimes heated meeting and a split vote yesterday, residents in counties covered by the Southwest Idaho Health District will now no longer be able to get vaccinated against COVID at district health offices. Julie Lucata reports. The District Board of Health voted 4-3 to three Tuesday to remove the COVID vaccines from its facilities after receiving around 300 public comments urging them to do so. The board came to the decision following anti-vaccine presentations from multiple doctors widely accused of spreading conspiracy theories and misinformation, including Idaho pathologist Dr. Ryan Cole. They were invited to participate by the only physician on the Board of Health, Dr. John Tribble, who said COVID vaccines had not been proven to be safe. We don't really know. We've just proven that there's a lot of risks to these things. The efficacy is very low. Board member Jennifer Reby said she was concerned about the board's authority to make medical decisions on behalf of the public. I just don't feel comfortable as a board of county commissioners making determinations on the quality of pharmaceuticals, how they're produced. And I don't think that's our role. COVID vaccines are still available at commercial locations like CVS, Walgreens, and local clinics not affiliated with Southwest District Health. Julie Duqueta, Boise State Public Radio News. And we should note that health district 
covers Adams, Canyon, Gem, Owyhee, Payette, and Washington counties. Thirteen days now until Election Day, and while early in-person voting continues in a number of counties across the region, in Ada County, election officials tell us that they have never had this many people vote this quickly in an election. More than 60,000 votes have already been cast, more than 30,000 absentee, almost the same amount in person, just in Ada County. The most popular in-person early voting sites continue to be Meridian City Hall and the Ada County Election Headquarters. And here's a big reminder, the deadline to request an absentee ballot is this Friday, October 25th. By now, you've likely heard of a review of Idaho voter rolls and the discovery of likely non-citizens as possible voters in Idaho. Secretary of State Phil McGrain appeared Tuesday on Idaho Matters to talk about the issue. And recently, we went through the entire voter rolls, all, I think it's a million, 40,000 registered voters that we have currently, to verify and make sure there were no non-citizens on the rolls. And that's what that process was, that we identified these 36 people uh, that were highly likely. I will say we've already determined one of those 36 is a citizen. Um, So this is why we have to always approach this with caution. McGrain said the phase they're in now is giving those individuals the opportunity to prove their citizenship so that not to disenfranchise anyone's right to vote. Now to ranked choice voting, very much an issue Idaho voters are considering this year. In fact, the possibility is on a number of ballots across the region, as Murphy Woodhouse reports. For those unfamiliar with it, ranked choice voting can seem confusing. But Rachel Cobb, a political science professor at Suffolk University in Boston, likens it to something almost universally grasped. Shopping for ice cream. You may have your top flavor, but if that's not there, you've got a backup or two that you'd also like. And that is exactly what we're doing under ranked choice voting. This election, voters in Idaho, Nevada, Colorado, and Oregon will all decide whether to adopt such a system. Cobb isn't surprised to see the idea get a foothold in the region. The West has always been the place where voting reforms have been experimented with the earliest and the most. She acknowledges that every voting system has its pros and cons, but Cobb says there is some evidence to suggest that ranked choice voting can have a moderating effect on candidates who would have an incentive to attract voters who may give them a second or third ranking. For the Mountain West News Bureau, I'm Murphy Woodhouse. Who dreads jury duty? Maybe most of us. Ada County recently has put considerable effort into changing that perception making the experience better for jurors. Now the county is being recognized for those improvements, as Troy Oppe reports. The National Center for State Courts recognized Ada County as this year's winner of the G. Thomas Musterman Award for Innovations in Juror Experience. Ada County jurors can now get a free Uber ride if they need or reimbursements for child care or counseling after a difficult trial. It's paid for by fellow jurors who donate their compensation. Last year in 2023, over 51% of our jurors out of the entire year donated. Randy Rutland is the county's jury commissioner. He says simply promoting the Juror Assistance Fund took it from a couple thousand dollars a year to now more than $200,000. Parking, all of our snacks and drinks in the cafe, completely free for jurors, uh, and then uh, lunches as well. Rutland even changed the chairs where jurors wait. The old school desk chairs are gone. There are even a few comfy chairs in the jury waiting room. His next step, try to get most jury service down to just a single day. Troy Oppie, Boise State Public Radio News. And that is today's episode of The Connector. I'm George Prentice. We'll see you back here on Thursday. If you're enjoying the podcast as part of your routine, we'd love it if you could rate or review it wherever you're listening right now. And if you're feeling generous, spread the word in your circle. Share the connector with a friend that you might think would like it. And thank you for listening. The candidates for November are set. I know Donald Trump's tight. Between now and Election Day. We are not going back. A campaign season unfolding faster. Kamala Harris is not getting a promotion. Than any in recent history. Make America great again. Follow it all with new episodes every weekday 
on the NPR Politics Podcast.